Hello, everyone. John Doyle from Optics EQ. Another video race of the day. This is uh, Wednesday, February the 9th, race one at Gulfstream. And uh, first thing I want to tell you, it's a red plot fit. Now, we've used these before. They're not the best races. They're the most, I would say, predictive in terms of the way the race can be run. But you can create opportunity with these red plot fits. So don't ignore them totally. I'm going to show you in this race how we can do that. The contention is a snowflake. And the speed rating is very high. So it's kind of odd, right? You got race, maybe not a lot of contention, but looks like it's going to be fast. So we may be having some horses stretching out that could create sometimes these, you know, fast pace races, uh, even though there might not be a lot of speed contention. If you look at the, uh, the early pace types in this race, you got three and five are really the only two. And it's kind of odd because the three uh, really, and you're going to see he's one of the horses that we'll talk about later. He comes from, looks like he comes from off the pace based on where he plots. So, you know, may, it, could there be a change in tactics today to, you know, put him closer to the lead? Don't know. But um, it's just odd that that horse doesn't seem to, to fit the EP style um, today. And then you have the five is the other one. He kind of like gets, doesn't really have any kind of separation, it looks like, between him and the nine and the two. So, you know, a scenario where maybe a speed of the speed in a race like with like low contention, high speed rating with one of them could kind of run off and uh, take the lead and just keep going, um, run them off their feet. Don't see it in this situation, right? I would want to see the five with a lot of separation and that might be the case, but not, not here, right? The plots tell me it doesn't really have that kind of separation. Uh, so, the E types in this particular scenario, I don't like. Um, and I wouldn't like anyone kind of chasing a fast pace that uh, is not in the lead. So th those horses will back up. So essentially I'm looking for closers or squares in this race. And the only three horses that fit the category for both the standard and surface and distance would be the three, four, and six. So that's what I'm looking for in this race. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on those horses and uh, let me just clear this out. And I'm going to go over to the grid and look at the three, four, and six. Okay, so I'm going to start with the number three horse. Uh, and this was the one that we were a little odd on because, you know, this was, you know, he, he seemed to be more of a uh, early pace type, but on the plot, he looked like a closer. So what is he? Uh, don't know, but he does have some gate issues, you can see. Uh, the first thing I will say is the horse is capable of running in today's range, right? So this horse has run 80, 81. That's good enough to get it done. So that's the first thing. Second thing is this horse is coming off a layoff of 152 days and ran a really bad race. D didn't do much running at all. Uh, you know, the race was really spaced out. Now, the horse gets a little bit of a drop. You know, maybe the scenario is a little bit different today. Doesn't have that spaced out. Maybe he's a little bit closer to the pace. Maybe he's more effective when he's a little closer to the pace. Um, so maybe there's improvement, gets a jockey change. Uh, you know, the trainer's been a little sneaky good at the meet uh, with limited starters. So this horse, you know, especially at 20 to one, you want to pay attention to in the exotics, you know, especially if there's some upside on that, you know, maybe that they look for that race as a prep. Um, like I said, this horse has done well over this surface too before and capable on his best. So. Not a bad horse to look at, especially in exotics at 20 to one. The number four, uh, Frankie's girl comes out of the same last race. Didn't do much running either. Did, 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 did better than, uh, you know, the number three. But the fact is that this horse is like sixth or fifth or sixth race in his current kind of form cycle. He, he's another horse capable of winning uh, and, you know, capable of running fast enough to win. So contender. Just, you know, at five to one, you know, it's all about the price here. Don't like this horse um, as much as the three, especially for exotics and so forth. So I would prefer the three over the four price and all the rest. Um, the horse that I think really deserves a look and the horse I kind of leaning on here in this race is the number six. I guess it's pronounced kite, kiteny. Um, this horse has been running, his last four races have been on synthetic. And I don't think that's his preferred surface. Um, you can see that he's uh, run some turf races that are definitely good enough uh, over this track. And I'm going to show you, I'm just going to do a filter on turf races. 
at eight and a half furlongs. And you can see this horse really hasn't run a bad race with the exception of maybe one race. Um, <clears throat> and even that race wasn't so bad. That was early on in his three-year-old season. So, you know, there was plenty upside there. So he's run good races um, at today's surface and distance. Uh, and what I liked about the last race, even though it was on synthetic, uh, he improved in that race. And also noticed that he had blinkers on. That was the first time they put blinkers on him and he was closer to the pace. So he, that's not his normal style. So I'm wondering if they were trying to get some kind of fitness into him or they were trying something new. It didn't work out. But I like that. I like the fact that he was up closer and he kind of stayed on around an even race. So I think, you know, with this kind of pace scenario where he's going to get some more pace to run at, you know, his style of being able to come from off the pace as he's done in the previous things, I think kind of set up nice for him. And the good thing about him, if the pace doesn't materialize, he can close into slow paces too. He's kind of proven that. So to me, of the squares, uh, Kitney looks the best. I think he's ready for primo effort. I, I like the rider change to Leperu because Leperu has run twice, I think, in this meet with Garofalo, and they both won one, one ran third. So I think um, I think this race is the target for this horse. And so I like him, especially at... Uh, his morning line of eight to one. So in review, it's all about the squares, in my opinion, this race. I think the long shot is number three, Starry Hope. Uh, and uh, the key for me would be Kitney uh, in a return to the turf for Garofalo and Leperu. okay? It's John Doyle, and don't forget, sign up with us at, uh, subscribe with us on YouTube, and also take a look at us at opticseq.com. Just to let you know, uh, next week, and I'll put an announcement out to all our clients. We will be upgrading our website. So look for that, some new features. And I'll be doing some videos around that too. And again, uh, we'll be doing this weekend the Sam F. Davis for Tampa as our Kentucky Derby preview. And thanks for listening. Appreciate all your support.